Story of their cool mustache. Hi, everyone. Hello, Hi, Lucy. Lucy. <gasps> Boris. Hi, Lucy. What's wrong? Nothing. Only you look different. Whiter. Oh, yes. Sometimes on cold nights, my fur turns white, like, uh, camouflage. I see. And your voice. You seem to have a different accent. I've been having lessons. Really, Boris? Well, you certainly sound different, but I'll bet you can still do your famous Russian bear dance. Err... Uh... Oh, come on, Boris. Don't be shy. <gasps> Did someone mention dancing? Hi, Lucy. Don't worry. This is the real me. Huh. We had you fooled there, didn't we? You certainly did. But what are you two up to? Snowbird popped round to tell you a special story. That sounds exciting. What's it about? Wait a moment, Lucy. We all have to get settled in first. <clears throat> this is the story of Air Cool Mustache. <laughs> Sydney the seal was juggling some fish. <sighs> I spy with my little eye <clears throat> something beginning with I, an iceberg. Sydney had seen many icebergs in his time, but this one was new. And on the iceberg, sat a very large walrus. I wonder who it is. Arr. Never seen a walrus in these parts before. Ahoy there! Arr, arr. Hello! Arr, arr. My name is Sydney the Seal. Arr, arr. Pleased to meet you. My name is Hercule Moustache. And my bottom is cold for sitting on this iceberg for so long. Oh, have you come far then? I come from a place called Mossy Bay. You've probably heard of it. No. Oh, it is a beautiful spot. Famous for the scenery and the moss, of course. Uh, I miss it already. Oh, uh, uh, it's nice here, too. Lots of things to see and do. Yeah. So I have been told. I am on my orders, you see, and my friend suggested the North Pole. So, here I am. Only it doesn't look very interesting. Oh, you won't be disappointed. Uh, uh, I could show you around. Thank you. Uh, that would be nice. Hercule, uh, uh, I'll take you to the most spectacular sight you've ever seen. Oh, really? And what might that be? It's a surprise. Arr, arr. Follow me. And on your left, arr, arr. you can see hundreds of icebergs, all of different sizes. My dear Sydney, I have seen enough icebergs uh, to last me a lifetime. Where is the surprise of which you spoke? Arr, arr. You'll soon find out. 
Okay, this is the first stop at our guided tour. Uh, more icebergs, I expect. Oh. Da da! Hmm. I see. I'm not really one for modern art, but. Hello. Uh, that's my friend Snowbird. A bear. Uh, uh, he made the ice sculptures. Uh, uh. Oh, I see. That is your surprise. Very good. Oh, yes, a bear who does sculpture. Very good indeed. Oh, uh, but that wasn't it. <laughs> your surprise will be much more spectacular than that. It will? Yeah. Snowbird will show us the way. Come on. Uh, uh. I packed some things in a rucksack, and the three of us set off together. Is it much further? Ugh, and that wind is very cold for me. Brrr. I knew I should have gone to the Sahara. Sunshine, sand, relaxation. Do you like our fountain? Very nice, oui, oui. Though I've seen fountains before, bigger than this, of course. Oh! Oh, ho, 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 ho. This well will take us across the water. Across the water? Oh, I won't get wet, will I? North, please. Eventually, the ice became so thick that the whale could go no further. What's happening? We've stopped. Has he broken down? Oh, la la. This is a disaster. Don't worry. We can walk the rest of the way. Arr, arr. More walking? I don't believe it. This is like a the marathon. After this holiday, I will need another holiday. Sydney and I were getting fed up with Air Cool's moaning. North. Always north. <laughs> Almost there! Arr, arr. I like this view. Uh, yes, very nice. Can we sit down now? Yes, Hercule. Arr, arr. Just sit there. Yeah! North! Always north! Oh no! The snow is everywhere! What have you done to the mustache of poor Hercule? But it's a snow ride, Hercule. You're meant to be covered in snow. I should never have come to the North Pole. Now we were really fed up with Hercule. We'd shown him so many exciting things, and all he could do was complain. Maybe you're right. Her you should have stayed at home, Hercule. Yes, in the South. <clears throat> so... Where is this surprise you have promised me? Well, Hercule, our journey is over. Her We're here at last. Here? Here is my surprise? Yes. Make yourself comfortable. Her her the show is about to begin. The uh, show? Show? But, but this is madness. Here there is only black sky and ice. Hercule felt very disappointed, but he didn't dare complain anymore. Hercule, did you know that the spot we're sitting on is the exact North Pole? Yes, this is as far north as you can go. Really, that's uh, very interesting. Let's have a picnic. Ah, a fish. As we were us say, who could wish? For more than a fish. Thank you for the picnic surprise. Merci. Thank you, my friends. <laughs> <laughs> the picnic wasn't our surprise, but look up! Up in the sky, Hercule! Hercule looked up, and the skies began to change. Welcome, Hercule, to your surprise. The Northern Lights. Oh, it is so beautiful. Hail spectacular. Thank you for this wonderful surprise. We're so glad you enjoyed your holiday here at the North Pole. Hey, look, the lights have started again. Oh. 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 
Air Cool had enjoyed the Northern Lights so much, he promised to tell all his walrus friends to visit the North Pole, too. I feel like Hercule. What? Have you got a moustache? No, silly. I mean, I'm like Hercule because I got a lovely surprise, too. Snowbird story. I'm glad you enjoyed it. And now, isn't it time you went travelling north? Back to my bed, you mean? Yes. Good night, Lucy. Good night, everyone. See you soon. Good night, Lucy. at 64 Zoo Lane, and I have some very special neighbours. Look! There's one with a hop, and one who can jump, and one who is, well, a little bit blind. 64, 64, 64 Zoo Lane. Some like it hot, and some like it chill. Hi, everyone. Sorry I'm late. We thought you weren't coming tonight. Yeah, we thought you'd forgotten us. Oh, I'd never do that. That's nice to know. Only some animals have terrible memories, you know. Not elephants. No, not elephants. I know an animal with a bad memory, but I forget what type of animal it is. Oh, Boris. I have a story about a forgetful animal. Listen. This is the story of Boris the bear. Who? Me? You're going to tell a story about me? Yes, but don't worry. It's a very nice story. You told me it yourself. Is it all right if I continue? Mmm, mmm. It was autumn in the forest where Boris lived. All the animals wanted to eat as much as they could before the cold winter came. The bear was feeling very hungry, too. No, not there. But he had a problem. Oh, not there either. Oh. Hello? Hello? Anyone there? Hello, Boris. What are you up to? I've lost my honeycomb. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I had it this morning, but now I can't find it anywhere. Oh, Boris. 
Hey, Beverly, did you hear this? Boris has lost his honeycomb. Bad time to lose a honeycomb. Winter's coming. Hey, Randolph, heard the news? What news? It's Boris. He's lost his honeycomb. Oh, bad news, big fella. The animals decided to try and help Boris. I got it. Boris can't remember where he put the honeycomb, but he definitely had it earlier today, so all he has to do is to repeat everything he's done since morning. Beverly, that's a mighty fine idea. Let's get started, then. What's the last thing you can remember, Boris? I... Oh, um... You don't have to walk backwards, Boris. Just think backwards. It's easier to remember like this. Boris remembered he had been washing his paws. Hmm. It would look nice inside my cave. Boris, what are you doing? What about the honeycomb? Oh, it's a nice piece of timber. Hey, why are you going that way? We're not going anywhere. It's you. Get off the log, Boris. <laughs> You'll have to jump, Boris! But Boris didn't like getting wet. Hey! Watch out for my dam! Ooh. Oh, no! Ooh. Ooh. Oops. That dam took ages to build. I'm sure Boris will help you build a new one, Bev. Now, let's concentrate. We still haven't found Boris's honeycomb. Now, what did you do before you were at the river, Boris? Um, oh, yes. What were you doing out here in the middle of nowhere? I can't remember. Uh, I think I was running. Running? But you don't like exercise, Boris. Yes, it's strange, isn't it? What was that noise? Boris's stomach, probably. No, it came from over there. Ah, now I remember why I was running. To get away from the herd of bison. Bison? <laughs> Sorry, Randolph. Boris's friends began to wonder if they would ever find the missing honeycomb. What did you do before the bison chased you, Boris? Oh, uh, that's easy. I took a nap. I can even remember where. That's the way, big fella. I was lying down on some soft moss. Good, good. Now, this is good, Boris. Now, what else? Such lovely soft moss. <sighs> and I had my eyes shut. It was so warm and cozy. Morris! What? <gasps> I don't think we're ever gonna find that honeycomb. I like walking in the mountains. The air is so fresh. I only came up here to play in the snow. You mean? We're not even looking for the honeycomb up here? Oh, Boris! <laughs> you just can't help some animals. I lost my whole crop of mushrooms. At least we tried. Doesn't anyone want to play? is shouting to us. He probably wants us to play some silly game in the snow. <gasps> oh. 
Only looking for my honeycomb. Boris and his friends arrived back in the forest. And Boris sat down on his favourite old log. <gasps> What's that under your log, Boris? Huh? My honeycomb! Hmm. You mean... It was here all the time? Right under your nose? How could I forget? Anyone for honey? Boris! <laughs> oh, Boris, you are funny sometimes. Oh, well. When we have something important to remember, we tie our tails in a knot. See? What was it you're trying to remember? I think I know the answer to this one. Is it time for Lucy to go to bed? Correct! Mm, I should have guessed. <sighs> oh well, good night everyone. Sleep tight, Lucy! neighbors look there's one with a hump and one who can jump and one who is well a little bit blind. 64 64 64 Zulay. some like it hot and some like it chill and some like it both ways and that's a bit silly 64 64 64 Zulay. some are friendly some are scary but one thing is sure that Melanie the Moose. Hi, Lucy. Hi, everybody. You don't look very happy. Do you want to tell us what happened? No. No, I mean... Oh, she's so annoying. Who is? Trudy, of course. Trudy? She's your best friend, isn't she? Not anymore. I can't be friends with someone as clumsy and stupid as her. She broke my favourite fountain pen. Oh, see? This is all Trudy's fault. Sorry, Boris. Oh, never mind. Just don't make the same mistake I made, Lucy. What mistake was that? Breaking off a friendship because a friend of mine was clumsy. Of course, Melanie the Moose couldn't help being clumsy. With her great big hooves and great big antlers, accidents were bound to happen. Come on, 
Beverly. Can I help you with that log? No thanks, Melanie. I can manage. Oops. This is heavier than I thought. Oh no, Melanie. Look what you've done. Oh, sorry, Beverly. Hello, Randolph. Can I help you with your gardening? Thanks, Melanie. But. Uh, Melanie, mind your fate. You're squishing my mushrooms. Oops. Sorry, Randolph. Hello, Boris. Can I give you a lift up to that beehive? No need, I can reach. Ow! Thanks a lot, Melanie. Oh, sorry, Boris. Now Melanie felt really bad. She wanted to be helpful and useful, but all she seemed to do was cause trouble. Oh, if only I wasn't so clumsy. Then she saw some deer frolicking in a meadow. And she marveled at their grace and beauty. Oh, don't they look lovely? I wonder if a moose like me could learn to dance like a deer. Then maybe I wouldn't be so clumsy. Hello! Mind if I join you? Oh, well. Maybe Boris will play with me. Oh, Boris! Look at me! This was one disaster too far. Now we were really fed up with Melanie's clumsiness. My whole harvest gone in an instant. That honey was meant to be for my tea. Those mushrooms could have won me first prize in the annual vegetable growing competition. I just finished building that dam. I said I was sorry. Besides, you know me, I don't mean to be clumsy. But you are clumsy. And silly. And useless. You do nothing but cause trouble. What's the point in being friends with you? No point, I suppose. I am just a nuisance. Poor Melanie. She felt she couldn't do anything but leave us in peace. Who needs friends anyway? I'm better off without them. She climbed to the top of a mountain where she stopped to sit and sulk. At least there are no beehives to knock down up here, or mushrooms to squish, or beaver dams to break. Oh, it is cold and boring and lonely. As Melanie sat and sulked, it suddenly grew very cold and began to snow. Snow! Oh, it's far too cold up here. Melanie decided to go back down to the forest to get away from the snow. But she found it had snowed down there as well. Oh, it's cold here too. The snowy forest was very quiet. Melanie wondered where her friends had gone.
Hello? Where is it, reporter? Melanie, is that you? Mando. Melanie, I'm so glad to hear you. Mando, Beverly, where are you? Over here, Melanie. Boris, stop playing hide and seek. Come out so I can see you. We can't come out, Melanie. We're trapped under the snow. Please, can you help get us out? Now we realized how unfair we'd been to Melanie. We owe you a great big apology, Melanie. Will you ever forgive us for calling you useless and silly and clumsy? I already have. And besides, I am clumsy. But the important thing is, we are friends. And no matter what, we should never be so unkind to each other again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. agreed! agreed. <laughs> we were all so happy to be friends again. And that's the last time I ever broke off a friendship for such a silly reason. You're right, Boris. A fountain pen is a very silly reason. I just hope Trudy will accept my apology tomorrow. I'm sure she'll be as sweet as Melanie and happy to make it up with you. Do you really think so, Molly? We'd forgive you, so why shouldn't she? Thank you, Nelson. Good night, everybody. Hello, I'm Lucy. I live at 64 Zoo Lane and I have some very special neighbours. Look! There's one with a hump and one who can jump and one who is... Some like it hot, and some like it chill, and some like it both ways, and that's a bit silly. Some are friendly, some are scary, but one thing is sure, not one is ordinary. Some are spotty, some are shiny, they're prickly. The story of Snowbird the Polar Bear. Tell a story tonight. Ugh, your stories are boring. It's our turn tonight. Yeah, we know lots of stories. Scary stories. Exciting stories. Funny stories. Surely it's my turn tonight. No, mine. But, but you, you told, told a story, story yesterday. yesterday. That's not fair. Stop it. That's enough. I think tonight it's Boris's turn to tell me a story. What? Me? But I don't know any stories. I'm a bear of few words. You see, he's useless at telling stories. No, he's not. He's just shy. Come on, Boris, tell us a story. Well, uh, I suppose I could tell you the story of Snowbird. Snowbird? That's a funny name. Is he a bear, like you? Well, yes and no. He's a bear. But not a bear like me. Snowbird is a big white polar bear. Snowbird lived just around the corner from the North Pole in a house he built of snow. 
What shall we do today, Snowbird? Uh, we could play a game of dominoes. Good idea. Because he lived on his own, Snowbird often talked to himself. Hey, your turn, Snowbird. I've won again. Better luck next time, eh, hey, Snowbird? Snowbird was also a sculptor. He was very proud of all the snow sculptures he'd made, but sometimes he wished he had a friend to show them to. One morning, Snowbird decided to go fishing. fish for a week. How about you, Snowbird? So have I. Huh? Huh? Oh, wrong hole, sorry. Please don't go. Uh, but you're a polar bear. Uh, uh, You'll eat me. I won't eat you. I'm a fishitarian. You? A fishitarian? It means I only eat fish. Fish for breakfast. Fish for lunch and fish for dinner. Oh, yes, and fish for that tasty snack that keeps you going between mealtimes. You're not a fish, are you? Uh, of course not. I'm a seal, Sydney the seal. My name is Snowbird. Will you be my friend? OK. Shall we play a game? I've got some dominoes. Yeah! I have the double fish. That's not how seals play dominoes. I'll show you how it's done. Why are you putting all those dominoes in a row, Sydney? You'll see. Ready? Her, her, go! Yippee! Her, her. That was fun. Now, let's play dominoes the snowbird way. And so they did. They played dominoes all day. And when the sun set, Sydney had to go home. But he promised to come back the next morning. Bye. I think I have a friend. Yes, I think you're right. Now, you won't have to talk to yourself anymore. The next morning, Snowbird took Sydney to see his snow sculptures. Wow! These are great! <laughs> You're a real artist! Oh, it's easy, really. I have an idea. Stay here. Hurry up. I can't stay still much longer. Almost finished. Ready! <laughs> I haven't got a big tummy like that. Yes, you have. <laughs> now let's have some fun. Yeah. Sydney. Always. Promise. 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 
But one cold winter morning... The hole had disappeared. It was frozen. Sydney! 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 Snowbird couldn't find Sydney anywhere. And Sydney couldn't find Snowbird anywhere. I wonder if I will ever see Sydney again. He promised we'd always be friends. You're talking to yourself again. Sorry. It was midwinter and the days were as dark as the nights. Snowbird waited for the sun to rise. He waited and waited and waited, and then he fell asleep. Snowbird woke up on a warm spring morning. <laughs> hole in the ice was back. Only now it was a lot bigger. Hey, hey. Sydney, I thought I would never see you again. But I promised I'll be back. Hey, hey. And I always keep my promises. Oh, Sydney, I'm so happy to see you. I'm happy to see you too. Hey, hey. Look, I brought some friends to play. And that's exactly what they did. From that day on, Snowbird was never lonely anymore. That was a nice story. Not bad at all for a bare few words. It's made me feel a bit cold, though. <sighs> I think I'd like to go to my warm bed now. Good night, Boris. Good night, Lucy. Beverly the Beaver. Hi, everybody. Hi, Hi Lucy. Lucy. 
Mmm, popcorn. Yum! That's our favourite snack. <laughs> Mind if we have some too? No, this is my popcorn. I beg your pardon? That's rather a selfish attitude, Lucy. You don't want to end up like Beverly Beaver, do you? Who's Beverly Beaver, Boris? And how could she possibly be as selfish as Lucy? I'm not selfish. Am I? Just sit down and listen to my story. The forest we lived in was full of beautiful tall fir trees. All the animals loved the trees. Melanie the moose used to scratch her antlers against them when they got really itchy. Oh, how I love a good tree massage. Randolph the raccoon needed the trees to shade his lush mushroom garden. A hundred and two, a hundred and three, a hundred and four, ha! A hundred and five mushrooms, my best crop ever. And I was particularly fond of fallen trees, because that's where the bees lived. And where there's bees, there's honey. Mm, mm, yummy honey! Mm. Of course, Beverly Beaver needed the trees too. She used them to build her dam on the river, a bigger and better one every year. Oh, looking good, Beverly. Yep, another fine log dam. Amazing how you build them bigger and better year after year. You ain't seen nothing yet. This year, I'm going to build the biggest, greatest, grandest log dam in the whole wide world. <laughs> <laughs> I trust you, Beverly. Whenever you do anything, you go too far. Let us know when you finished your log palace. <laughs> huh. I'll show them. Beverly had decided she would build the biggest, greatest, grandest log palace ever. Timber! Timber! But to build her log palace, Beverly had to cut down lots and lots of trees. Randolph was the first to notice that something was not right. Hmm, I say, uh, who's still in my mushroom shade? Then Melanie. Hey, who stole my scratching post? And finally, me. Don't buzz me. I'm not the one who stole your tree. It wasn't fair. Beverly was taking all the trees to build her log palace and leaving us with nothing. This time, I'm afraid she's gone too far. She's stealing all the trees. Time to have a word with that busy beaver, I think. in your ear, if you please. About the trees, Beverly. Or the lack of trees, if you see what we mean. Sorry, folks. I've no time for chit-chat. My masterpiece is almost finished! What a selfish beaver! She's using up all the trees and just doesn't care. I can't grow mushrooms without them. I can't scratch my antlers without them. I can't find honey without them. Well then, I guess we'll just have to find ourselves another forest to live in. So off we went again to find a new home. Beverly didn't notice that her friends were leaving. She was still too busy chewing down trees. One, maybe two more trees, then it should be done. Yippee! Beverly's palace was almost finished, and that's all that mattered to her. There! That's the biggest, grandest, greatest log palace in the 
whole wide world, even if I do say so myself. Okay, everybody, it's ready. Hey, where is everybody? Where are all the trees? At first, Beverly didn't understand why the forest looked so empty and deserted. Oh, no! I've done it again! I've gone too far and cut down all the trees! But what about everybody else? Where have they gone? Melanie, where are you? Oh, no! I cut down Melanie's scratching post tree. Boris, you're still here, aren't you? I can't believe it. I took Boris's honey tree. Randolph, don't tell me you've left too. Oh, how could I? I took all the shade from Randolph's garden. No wonder they've all left me. How could I be so selfish? I wish I was with my friends instead of sitting on this useless pile of logs. Then Beverly got angry with herself and her log palace. Stupid, stupid palace. You're no good to me anymore. Oops. I take it back. Sorry. As she floated down the river, Beverly had lots of time to think about how badly she had treated her friends. <gasps> what brings you here, Beverly? Run out of trees while you were? I hope you don't plan to cut them all down here. We've just found the trees we need. Oh, no. I, I wouldn't dream of it. Never again. I promise. All I want to do is to make things up to you. How about I build a nice log house for you to live in? Thanks, but no thanks. As usual, you'll go too far. And that's a talent that can be put to better use. Especially now that the forest needs replanting. Say no more. I'll plant the biggest, greatest, grandest forest in the whole wide world. Trust you, Beverly. <laughs> <laughs> and so Beverly Beaver learned not to be so selfish. But she never did stop going too far. <laughs> <laughs> Bring some more tomorrow. <sighs> Good night, Lucy.
story of Melanie's birthday present. Fine, no need to fuss. Nelson fell over. It was quite funny, actually. A little slip, that's all. Will someone please tell me what's going on? Well, we thought that instead of telling you a story, we'd put on a little gymnastic display. And Nelson volunteered to start us off with his triple back somersault. Uh, I'm a bit rusty. Dear old Nelson, I do like gymnastics, but perhaps a story would have been easier. I tried to tell him. I should have warmed up first. That was the problem. How about a story while Nelson recovers? That's a very good idea, Boris. Mm. <laughs> this is a story about my friend Melanie. When the first snow began to fall in the forest, Melanie the moose knew that it would soon be her birthday. But Melanie wasn't happy. Oh! 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 It's no fun being a moose. I'm so big and clumsy. I wish I could spin like a squirrel. I suppose I could give it a try. Jumping jelly beans, that's the strangest dance I ever seen. Whatever are you doing, Melanie Moose? Oh, um, nothing, Randolph. She's, uh, jumping for joy, Randolph. Am I right in thinking it's your birthday soon? Well, yes. Melanie's but... birthday? Now that's exciting. We must have a party. There's so much to do. There's a cake to bake. And presents to make. Oh, well. I'll be seeing you. Bye, darling. Now, where were we? Ah, uh, yeah, about these presents. We were all so excited that we forgot whose birthday it really was. Mushroom. Melanie's gonna be so pleased with her birthday present. Meanwhile, Beverly the beaver was looking for the tallest tree in the forest. Hmm. Hello, Mr. Tree. You're just what I'm looking for. Tall and handsome. This long, smooth log. Meanwhile, I was busy mixing up a special blend from my collection of sweet things. Now let me see. Two drops of mm, delicious lavender honey and three drops of mm, maple syrup. And four, oh no, five. Drops of clover honey. Mm. <coughs> Yummy. <coughs> oh. oh, I wish I could leap like a salmon. <coughs> oh. What's she doing now? It's her birthday tomorrow. She's probably taking a bath. Night, Melanie! The next day, when the sun rose over the snowy mountains, it was Melanie's birthday. Oh, I wish I could fly like an eagle. Morning, Melanie. Oh, hi, Beverly. Oh, Randolph, I'm so sorry. Happy birthday, Melanie! 
We've each got your present. The biggest, juiciest mushroom in the forest. Just for you, Melanie. Melanie didn't like mushrooms very much. Oh, thanks, Randolph. Ooh. And this is for me. Oh, it's a log. That's nice. And guess what Boris the Bear got you? Oh, Boris, you shouldn't have. And you didn't. O oops. Dear, I, I seem to have eaten it all. Thanks for the presents, everyone. Now, if you don't mind, I think I'll go and look at the snoo for a while. I don't get it. That was one grade A prime timber log. High cut. Close trimmed, in season mountain pine. And I can tell you, that was no ordinary mushroom, neither. All I did was to taste the honey to make sure it was just the way I like it. <gasps> you said it right there, Boris, old buddy. We've each given Melanie something that we'd like ourselves. I still don't get it. Not what Melanie really wanted. Ah, I get it. Now. What would Melody want more than anything else in the world? She wants to fly like an eagle, leap like a fish, and spin like a squirrel. Ah, uh, but that's impossible for a moose. Maybe not. present. Close your eyes. Beverly led Melanie all the way to the top of a mountain. Now, open your eyes, Melanie. Happy, Happy birthday! A snowboard? Just what I've always wanted. <laughs> Make it go where I want it to. Melanie was having the time of her life. Whee! Whee! Such a wonderful present. Now you can fly like an eagle. Leap like a fish. And spin like a squirrel. But best of all is to have a birthday like a moose. <laughs> <laughs> a snowboarding moose. What a great story, Boris. Are you all right now, Nelson? Quite recovered, thank you. Sam when will we be seeing your triple reverse flip? Ugh. I'm sure Nelson could do one if he wanted to, but I think from now on we should stick to stories. That's what you all do best. That's right, Lucy. Now, there's just one more thing. Bed. <sighs> I know. Good night, everyone. Good night, Lucy. <laughs> <laughs>